Heavenly Father, we have come to learn from you. We are so grateful that you're a God that hears and answers prayer. And oh, how each one of us needs instruction. We need guidance. And Father, I just ask this afternoon that you will send the Holy Spirit to each one of us. Open our understandings that we can learn how to apply this to help others. Father, may we glorify you in everything we do and say. Father, we want to go home, and we know this message is going to go forward. So guide us this afternoon, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. It's always a real privilege for me to share God's miraculous, his power that he has placed in nature for our benefits. Now, there's many different aspects of, quote, natural remedies. And I'm sure if I opened it up, you could think of a lot of them. But let's go through some of them that's very, very beneficial. Hydrotherapy. How many of you are familiar with hydrotherapy, water treatments, how to bring about healing through the power of God through water? Very important. And I think we're having a hydrotherapy class, so you don't want to miss that. There's physical therapy, massage therapy, there's sunlight therapy. Many individuals do not realize that there is healing in the beams of the sun. The sun electrifies the air, giving us energy. And I could talk an hour on the healing properties of the sun. But we need to learn to use it wisely, intelligently, as we do all the other uh, laws of health. There's herbology learning how and when to use herbs intelligently. Plantology, one of the hottest subjects in science right now and has been for several years, the study of plants and how many antioxidants they are finding in produce, in plants that you and I eat. You cannot match it with a medication. You take a, a medication, may have several uh, different properties, but you take an apple, and I should have looked it up in my notes, but I believe it's 272 different healing elements in one apple. You can't match that. Man cannot improve upon God's healing powers. And it is, I've put together, um, and I, I have presented it, I don't know, three or four times last year, Health, the Missing Link, showing people what foods are high and what, and, and what to use them for. Very interesting. Um, the eight principles of health. Also, they are natural remedies that you need to learn and learn how to apply them. All of these healing processes are very, very important. God's power works through nature. Not only uh, to prevent sickness, but in the treatment of illness and disease. They are curative in power, they're rest, rest, what is it? restorative in nature. There are things that you're going to learn this afternoon that may shock you on a few things. I hope it does. I hope it wakes you up where you will just love to study the subject of natural remedies. Natural remedies have been along, around a long time. Ancient history talks about natural, using the things of nature. What did Hezekiah, what was he told to put on his boil? Figs. A poultice of figs. Did Jesus use natural remedies? What did he use? Dirt. Today we would call it clay. Clay and water. Very uh, excellent healing properties in both of those. Now there is a criteria to being a medical missionary. There is a criteria in using natural remedies. Is everyone listening? It's very, very important. Before you can be a true medical missionary, before you should attempt using natural remedies, you must, you must have a prayer life, devoted prayer life, a concentrated lifestyle for prayer, because God is going to instruct you. Many times you will not know what to do, but if you're connected with him, 
He will show you. He'll bring someone. Some, somehow he will get the message across, the information that you will need. It's very important that if you're going to be a medical missionary, start developing your prayer life. Um, I have to keep my notes where I get uh, distracted. Here I got two pages of the same thing. I would like to share with you just briefly how I got into natural remedies. It was over 37 years ago. 37 years ago, I was privileged to attend a medical missionary seminar like you folks are attending. Except the seminar that I attended, we had class 8 to 10 hours a day for two to three weeks. And I can't remember if it was a two-week se session or a three weeks, but it was held at Pacific Union College. It was a medical missionary training course, training individuals for the time of trouble when we don't have medical intervention, what are you going to do? The instructors, the instruct instructors were outstanding. They're, they were physicians from Loma Linda University. They had physical therapists there training us. They had massage therapists. They even had a chiropractor showing us some very harmless little uh, movements that we could do in case a person is suffering and, and needs that. There was herbology teaching us the use of herbs and um, plantology and all of that. One of the main speakers that was there was Dr. Charlotte Holmes. Now Charlotte, Dr. Charlotte as she was called, was one of the first women to graduate from Loma Linda University as a woman physician. She was young, she was single, and she had a lot of vitality, and so she started a practice in Hollywood. It was a thriving practice. And then one day she fell in love with one of her patients, Campbell, and they got married. After a while she got dissatisfied with her practice. She says there's got to be something more besides just listening to complaints of her patients, writing them out a prescription, or sending them to the hospital. What can we do to help them prevent all these things. So she, she made an intensive study of the little red books. Today they're blue, but you know what I'm talking about. The books of, that God gave the health message to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Ministry of Healing. I would, start, I would have you start with Ministry of Healing. That's what we're going through in our Sabbath school class. Outstanding books. There are several books. She studied them very diligently. She had a brain that would not quit. She could quote Bible verses left and right, but the spirit of prophecy she could quote, tell you the book, the page, the paragraph, and where it's located on the, on the page. Incredible mind. She made an intensive study of that, sold her practice, and her and Campbell moved to Arkansas where they set up a clinic and practiced using God's method of healing. She became very well known. People from all over the United States came to her. Usually they were on their deathbed. But God, through the healing nature, uh, healing powers of nature, restored these individuals. The other mentor that I had was Dr. Agatha Thrash. She's been in our home, slept in our beds, outstanding mentor. The other one was Dr. Charles Thomas. Um, from Loma Linda, hydrotherapy. I used to have him come, he'd stay with my parents, and I would sit at his feet learning hydrotherapy. As most of you who really knows me, I believe in the natural remedies. I've seen it work. Dr. Charlotte was one of the main speakers at this seminar. After each speaker spoke, we would have a 10 or 15 minute break. It was during this time I always sat in the front row. I was intense in learning this. And she saw this intensity in my countenance, and so she'd come and sit beside me. We became very, very good friends. One day she shared with me the burden that she had on her heart. She says, Linda, I'm getting old. She was somewhere between 70 and 80 at that time. You would never know it. She had so much vitality. Campbell had passed away. And she said, I need to train someone to carry the torch. Now you have to remember, 37 years ago, 40 years ago, medical missionary work was not popular. Doing natural remedies was not popular. And so uh, she says, I see in you someone that I could train. Are you willing? I accepted it. She came home with me. We spent hours, literally hours, days, months. We traveled with her. All kinds of experiences that God brought to us. So 
all of my mentors are gone. They are resting until Jesus comes. And the best I can do with the Lord's help is train you folks to carry the torch. Because now I'm getting older. We need young people to know how to use these natural means because like was a pastor, whoever was saying this morning, we're not going to be able to um, buy the things. Remember uh, Daniel 12, 1, time of trouble is coming that this world has never known before. There are several things that's going to happen during this time. If this time precedes the second coming of Christ, one of the things that's going to happen is you will not be able to purchase the services of a physician as you happen to be married to one or you have a friend. You won't be able to go down and buy those prescription drugs that you're in the habit of, dry, of buying if you are. What are you going to do? I'm going to give you some, uh, I think, three or four scenarios here. My class, please don't answer. But before we begin, the subject for ten, this afternoon is the emergency kit. Since I have studied natural remedies for 37 years, I told the pastor, how can I condense this in 90 minutes? So I, I prayed about it, and it came to my thought, would we'll just do the emergency kit. Each one of you will face an emergency at one time. What will you do? And you don't have to have a large amount of equipment. I started with a tote. This is my tote I started with. All my supplies was in here. You don't need a lot of equipment if you know how to use equipment that's in here. Well, one day Duane was in Red Bluff. He likes to shop at Salvation Army. And here was this bag. He says, Linda, this would be perfect for you. I looked at it. And I said, oh, look at all the compartments here. And I said, yes, this is what I want. Well, you know what kind of bag this is? If I can get it open. What kind is it? It's a camera bag. It was brand new, leather. I think I paid maybe 10 or 15 dollars. But this is my emergency kit bag. I believe that every family should have an emergency kit that you carry with you. Our youngest daughter, some of you know her, Tiffany and Ted, they had two little girls and Ted was into wilderness survival and all of this. And I was of course into natural remedies. They taught their girls very young about what to do in case of an emergency. And little Brittany, of course, now she's 13. She takes her little emergency bag with her everywhere she goes. And she knows how to use it. She was out here visiting once, and I don't see Searles here. But Sabrina had asked the girls to go play in the water with their kids. They were little tots then. Brittany took her little emergency bag. Well, Johnny got hurt. Sabrina didn't have anything. Brittany says, well, I'll fix them. She got in her bag and she fixed them all up, bandaged them up, and Sabrina was shocked. Children can learn how to apply these simple remedies. We need to train our young people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, with that said, we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> I'm going to give you three or four scenarios. What would you do? Now think about it. If you were in this situation, what would you do if you were bit by a rattlesnake, taken to the hospital, given the antidote, and was highly allergic to the antidote? What would you do if you were bit by a brown recluse spider, and they are out here, and there is no antidote? What would you do if you had one little child? It was a baby boy. And this little baby boy was in the most prestigious hospital here in the state of California. And you were just informed this morning that that little baby boy probably would not make it because they could not stop the diarrhea. What would you do if you came down with botulism and you had no medical intervention? What would you do in these cases? Now you can answer. Charcoal. Do you know how to use it? Do you know how to use it? <laughs> Messy stuff. Okay, let's go back. Charles Mattingly, member of this church, administrator of the St. Elizabeth Hospital at the time. Sunday morning, working out in his yard by his pool, was bit by a brown recluse or a, a rattlesnake. 
taken to the hospital, given the antidote, highly allergic. He thought he was dying. He calls us, Dwayne and a friend of ours that was living with us, who was a medical missionary, came down, and because he was the administrator, we were able to take the charcoal in the hospital and bandaged up, it was around his ankle, bandage it up and give it to him internally, saved his life. What if you were bit by a brown recluse spider and there's no antidote for it? What would you do? Charcoal again. That's how I first learned about charcoal. Dwayne and I and Tiffany, she was just small, the other two kids were in academy, uh, had gone about four or five hours south of here to attend a seminar by Dr. Thrash. And that last presentation, she taught us about charcoal, gave a demonstration how to make a charcoal poultice. I had never heard of charcoal up until that time. Class was over. We were loading up our trailer to come home, and I was bit by a brown recluse spider. You'll ne probably never see the spider, but you'll know if you were bit by a brown recluse spider. It always leaves a hole, and then it starts sloughing away. You can go on the internet and see pictures of it. It's gross. Very painful. Very painful. Time I got home, four or five hours later, I was not able to walk upstairs to my bedroom. And I can take a lot of pain. Dwayne had to help me. And I was laying there moaning and groaning. It was my right leg. And then I was started praying. You know, when you're in difficulty, what do you do? You pray. And the Lord said, well, you just learned this morning what to do. And fortunately, we had purchased some charcoal. So I told Dwayne, I said, go down and fix it like Agatha told us, showed us how to do it. So we did within 30 minutes of applying it the pain started to subside. When you have a serious bite like a rattlesnake, a brown recluse spider, you change the bandages every 10 minutes for about the first two hours. I mean, this is serious, and you take it internally. I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to do it. What if you had a baby boy who was in a hospital, was in Loma Linda University, and that morning you were told that baby probably would not make it because they could not stop the diarrhea. This happened to Dr. Charles Thomas, a student. He was the instructor, a teacher down at Loma Linda on hydrotherapy and stuff. He had gone to the classroom early that day. He was sitting at his desk, and a young man, one of his students, walked in. And so Charles looks up, and he could see by his countenance something was very, very wrong. And he says, young man, what's bothering you this morning? And then he tells the story that his little baby boy probably would not make it. Charles says, young man... Don't you remember how I taught you and the class how to make slurry water? Go home and make slurry water out of charcoal and give it to your child. And he did and saved the child's life. I tell you, I am so convinced about charcoal, the healing power. We have seen it over and over again. Botulism, what would you do? Charcoal again. Our son-in-law was visiting an elderly man, had some tainted olives, came down with botulism, and they didn't have medical insurance. So they didn't want to go to the hospital. Tiffany comes running over at midnight, wakes me up. She says, Mother, what are we going to do? Tiffany's a nurse. She knew the symptoms and everything. So what do I do? I call our physician. Some day's going to be we won't be able to call our physician. Dr. Louis came down and spent the rest of the night from midnight on that morning administering charcoal. He'd throw it up administer it again. He stayed with him there. all those hours, saved his life. So I really believe in charcoal. I want to share a few facts about charcoal. It's a substance that, you, that can attract 80% of its weight in ammonia gas. It's rated category number one for safe and effective status by the FDA for to acute toxic poisoning. It's been around a long time. What the amazing thing with charcoal is, is that it reaches its maximum absorption very quickly, usually within one to two minutes. Now, let me back up just a little bit. When you're working with natural remedies, you have to act quickly. I received a call Thursday from a lady who thought she was bit by a brown recluse spider. I says, charcoal, charcoal. How long has it been? Two days. 
that's too long. She ended up in the hospital. Praise the Lord, she's here today. I also received another call from Cindy the same day. My little girl has an earache. Again, charcoal. She didn't have any charcoal. Fortunately, Luella just lives up the way. I says, go, go see Luella, call Luella. She will do it. So what happened, Cindy? Just talk loud. <laughs> Now, what did you think at that moment when you were applying it externally? I thought, wow, how is this going to work because it's not in the ear or you know, it's way out here on the outside of the ear. But we put it on the ear and I wrapped it with a bandage around so it would stay there and she laid down. And um, it, she had it on maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I mean, here, keep it on, keep it on. Yeah. Amazing. When you think of charcoal, think of CD. Can you remember a CD? Charcoal draws. That's its powerful properties. It draws inflammation. It draws infection. It draws pain. It draws toxins out of the body. You cannot go wrong with charcoal. Dr. Thrash has always administered charcoal and then figure out something else. But I have never... Did you have a question? I said you can't overdose either. No, you can't overdose. Loma Linda tried that. A study years and years ago, you cannot overdose. And the amazing thing is charcoal pulls out toxins, but it does not pull out the minerals or the vitamins in the body. But if you do overdose, if I can call that in charcoal, you'll be so constipated, you will, because it is binding. So if you use charcoal, use a lot of water. Okay, let's go on. now. What if you had a situation? Now, in your notebook, I'm not sure which page it is. You can read, uh, you know, how to uh, what the uh, the remedy is for, you know, overdose of charcoal, or I mean, uh, aspirin. I'll get my act together pretty soon. Um, and I want to, um, I'm going to make a charcoal poultice for you in a few minutes. No, it's not in order. Anyway, we were visiting our youngest daughter, Tiffany and Ted, in Minnesota during the month of May. About 10 days we were back there for a special occasion. Ted's a general building contractor, and I don't know of a general building contractor that doesn't get hurt sometime. He comes home one evening, and at the supper table, he says, Boy, I sure hurt my knee today. He says, It's really painful. Well, Ted is one that kind of talks all the time. <laughs> Anyway, so we just kind of passed it off. Yeah, he got hurt. Friday, that next night, Friday evening, at this meal time, that evening, he says, oh, my knee is killing me. I finished up a job. Monday morning, I start a roofing job. How am I going to do this? My knee is pain. It is painful. I can't even bend it. I can hardly walk on it. And I said, well, what did you do to it? Did you hit it? I mean, what, you know, you want to find the cause. No, I don't know. So, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes later, he was in the living room and he calls me. He says, Linda, come here, look at this thing. So he pulls up his pant leg, and I was not prepared to see what I saw. You've all probably experienced or have seen or maybe seen pictures of water on the knee, you know, where your kneecap just balloons. What is the scientific term for that. <laughs> yeah, it was edema, exactly. But what I was not prepared to see was that his whole knee was red, beet red. I felt of it and had it was hot. So what does that tell you? Inflammation? Infection? Who knows? So I turned to Tiffany and I says, Tiffany, we have got to put a charcoal poultice on this right now. She says, Mother, I was looking for my charcoal last week. I needed it. I must be out. Don't ever be out of charcoal. <laughs> and I said, so what would you do if you didn't have charcoal? 
Oh, it's so exciting what God has given to us. If I can find it. What is this? I just dug it from my little plant. It's a baby potato. A red potato is very similar to charcoal that it draws. It draws. So if you don't have charcoal, use an organic potato. Those of you who have my gardening book, look up the page on potatoes. It doesn't have to be red. It doesn't have to be red, but red has more higher propensities for healing than the white. I was taught that by Dr. Holmes. I have no scientific proof for that, <laughs> but I always used a red potato. So this is what I did. This is what you do. I'm going to show you. Now, in your kit, I have a list. The only thing I forgot, and you might want to write it on your list, I forgot you should have a pair of scissors. But I have my charcoal. This is what slurry water. I just told you about slurry water. You put the, in a whole quart. I didn't put quite because I wanted you to see this. You put about a fourth of a cup in a whole quart of water, and you shake it, and you let it settle. And you shake it, and you let it settle. And then you very carefully pour off the water. That's what Charles' student gave his baby, was the slurry water. You'll have all the settlement down here at the bottom that you discard with. But it has all of the uh, healing properties in it, and you can give it to a child. I, a friend of mine, uh, not too far away, had a new, adopted a new baby girl, and she was a druggy baby, was born because the parents were druggies. She says, Linda, what can I do? I said, start giving the baby slurry water. She's a bright young girl today. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to show you the, the uh, have a, a, a bag of bandages. These are cotton. You want to use 100% cotton. So I save my t material when I sew. Then I can cut. These are my bags this is for onions. So then I cut a square about like this. And you can go down to you know Walmart or Joann's and get 100% cotton. Muslins, right now, they are on sale for 40% off. So you start with that. If you do not, if you do not have a cloth, a thin cotton, you don't want it thick, but a thin, you can always use a paper towel. Now oh, here's my paper towel. You can always use a paper towel for a poultice. So I'm going to put paper towel down here first. Here's my rag. Now in your medicine kit, you will want to always have cups and you will always want to have a spoon. Now, any of you who have worked with charcoal knows it is very fine. It will just blow everywhere. You always add, oh, and, and you need a little container of water. Always have water with you. So you just put your water in first. I'm just going to make a small one. If you have serious things, then, and I think I have it in your handouts, then you would do the flaxseed. You would bring one-third cup of water to a boil, set the pan off, and add one tablespoon of fresh ground flaxseed. Flaxseed draws, and it helps keep the, the charcoal from drying out so fast. So they work together. Uh, one tablespoon of fresh ground. Okay, we're going to make our charcoal poultice. I'm going to try real hard not to splatter it everywhere. Can you see it? You know, it just flies. How do you get that flax seed ground up? A little seed grinder. Everyone should have a little seed grinder and get them at Walmart. Okay, now this is what you do. You make your flax seed first. Now, this is optional. If you don't have time or you don't have flaxseed, don't worry about it. Just use charcoal. But the best would be to use, you know, make your um, flaxseed. And then, you know, you have your pan. The flaxseed gets gummy like egg whites. And then um, add your charcoal to it. You want your charcoal the consistency of thick gravy. How many of you make gravy? Yeah, you know how... Thick, thick gravy. 
I put a little bit more water than I intended to in here. So we're going to stir it up very carefully. Now, if you have a situation where you have to take it internally too, like with a rattlesnake bite, brown recluse spider, you would put a tablespoon in a glass of water and you would drink it. It's very hard to drink charcoal. So in your medicine bag, you always have a clean, sterile straw. You can get it down. Children can get it down with a straw. It just goes right down. But if you're just drinking it like this, much harder. Okay, I have... What? What? Oh, yes, Tracy. If I had time, I could write a book on all the miracles that we have seen with these products that I will be sharing with you this afternoon. Uh, Dr. Dr. Youngberg says if you make it real cold, it won't taste bad at all. Yeah, that's true, if you have a cold. Okay, now here is the consistency that you want it. You see it? Real thick gravy, okay? Do you see how, how it is? Okay, then you put it on the middle of your rag Depending on how big an area, you want to cover your area well. If it's a bee sting, cover the area well. If it's a rattlesnake bite, brown recluse bite, do a big area. So then you take your cloth and you fold it over. And then this part, the one thickness, you will put on the area. One thickness. This part is folded over. Then what you can do is put another, I have all kinds of claws here. So say on an earache, you'd have that, and then you would put this over it on your ear, and then you always carry, I, I usually have a couple of ace bandage, and then you wrap it around the head to hold it on. With an earache, you, we usually do a hot foot bath too. Draws the uh, toxins, the, the circulation down away from the ear. Okay, so now you have a problem. Ted's knee. It's inflamed, painful, and you're out of charcoal. So you have a grinder, and you're going to grate a potato. Now, new potatoes are juicier than the older potatoes. So we're just going to stop at that. And my spoon. So I'm going to take a spoon and kind of squish it to try to get as much juice as possible out. And I'm going to have my cloth. I have lots of these. I'm going to put this on a cloth with, with a potato poultice. I like to use, where is it? I have a new one. I like to use gauze because it will stick to it. Oh, I must have used it. Okay, we will take the gauze out of this one. Have some, uh, have, uh, you know, gauzes I really like because then the poultice will stick to it. And we did a, a pretty good area. I'm just going to do a small one here. So we're going to put that on our cloth. We're going to put the potato on the gauze and kind of mash it down so it will stick to the, the, the gauze. And then because of the situation that Ted had, I'm, I didn't fold it over so there's, there wasn't a thin piece of cotton between him and the poultice. I took the poultice and I put it right on his knee because it needed full strength. Needed full strength. So then we wrapped it up with an ace bandage. It was bedtime. We went to bed. After every treatment, whatever you do, there's a very, a very important point. You are not the healer. You are not the doctor. You are only God's servant, applying the means that he has made available to you. So we always pray. We always pray, asking God, 
to work through the healing treatment that whatever we're doing. So we had prayer, sent him to bed. I woke up a couple times during the night, prayed again, you know, bless, bless our feeble efforts with just a potato. The next morning I couldn't wait. And so I got up, pretty soon Ted got up, took the bandage off. He says, look at this, look at this. I mean, his kneecap was so swelled the night before. It was all gone except for one little corner. All the red was gone and the heat was gone. The fever was gone out of it. He says, I have no pain. He was so excited just from the humble potato. God is putting things in. You can use for infection. You can use a carrot if you have nothing else. Hand, Denny. Good point. Charcoal will pull your medication out. So if you are taking charcoal internally, don't take it the same time you take your medication. It will pull it out. It won't pull the vitamins and minerals out. God knew what it was doing, but it will pull that. So anyway, Monday morning came. Ted went to do the roofing job. No pain, nothing, but we did see after the swelling and the, and the redness had gone, he had two bites. He had been bit by something, and that's what was causing the problem. But about a week later, we were home. I called Tiffany. I said, Ted ever complain anymore about his knee? What happened? She says, no. Never flared up again. That was it. So simple things that God has given to us. Um, what if, what if, and, uh, on your picture, it didn't show too well. What if you got a splinter? Have you ever had a splinter you couldn't get out? Contractors are good at that. Gardeners are good at that. These little tiny splinters, microscopic, you, could, you can feel it, but you can't already see it, and you can't get it out. Again, a potato poultice. Tiffany called me about a year ago. Ted had come home, and he had got a huge splinter underneath his fingernail and had smashed his finger. And she says, Mother, I can't get him to go to the emergency room. This looks horrible. What am I going to do? Will you talk to him? I says, Tiffany, just put a potato on it. Put a slice of potato. You just slice, slice a potato, put it on, wrap it up. It throbbed like everything that night. The next morning, he couldn't wait to get up. He says, Tiffany, take this thing off took the bandage off, gave it a little squeeze, and out came the splinter. It's incredible, the drawing power that potato has. A couple years ago, we were I was asked, and Dwayne and I went, to a church retreat up in Oregon. There were several churches doing a retreat. They asked me to take the whole weekend uh, being their speaker, so Sunday morning I did natural remedies. And I told about the potato. You can tell by people's countenance <laughs> if they believe you or not. And I could tell by the pastor and his wife, Linda, this is utterly ridiculous. She was a nurse. She says, this just doesn't work. I, it was written all over her face. After this seminar, we packed up, came home. The next day, the very next day, I got a call from her. Pastor's wife. They've now moved to, just transferred to Florida. She says, you won't believe this. She says, when we were loading up, our oldest son, he was a teenager, tearing down something, had a splinter, and she says, I couldn't get it out. And they says, well, let's try Linda's potato thing. It's not my potato thing, it's God's. He's, he's the one that has the power in it, not me. And they did, and the next morning, they gave it a little tiny squeeze, and out it popped. Drawing power. Very, very good. Okay, um, we've talked about charcoal draws. It draws, let's go over it again, so you're well uh, informed about the, the benefits of charcoal, and you have a list in it. But for in, uh, externally, for all kinds of bites, you know, but what about internally? Number one choice treatment for nausea, diarrhea, usually one application of charcoal takes care of diarrhea, sometimes two. Um, <coughs> Where's my list? Just pulled a blank. Help me, folks. Well, you can use it for sore throat. Oh, vomiting. 
and intestinal infections pulls out pain. Remember that. Charcoal draws. Potatoes draw. Be sure they're organic. The others are treated so horribly. Just read my natural remedy book. I have a whole page on it of what they do when they raise commercial potatoes. You don't want that on a sore. Uh, what, ha, have you ever had the experience, those of you who have worked with charcoal, that you're in a situation that you're vomiting? And so you take charcoal. You know, it's good to vomit and get stuff out of your stomach if you've got food poisoning or whatever. But you can't stop vomiting. So you take charcoal and you throw it up. Take some more charcoal and you throw it up. Have you ever had that experience? Our youngest daughter, Tiffany, she, as a baby, if she would start vomiting, she ended up in the ER, the suppository, because she could not stop vomiting. Some people are that way. Um, they will vomit all night for food poisoning or whatever. How can you stop vomiting if charcoal doesn't work? Hmm? I didn't hear you. Lemon juice? Hmm. I'll have to try that one. Sauerkraut. This has never, ever failed. You don't eat the sauerkraut, but it's the juice. It's the juice. And you start with one half teaspoon, and you give the individual one half teaspoon of sauerkraut juice. Every home should have a pantry of sauerkraut. Now in our home we use bubbies that you keep in the refrigerator because we like sauerkraut. Good for Dwayne. Anyway, but in my pantry I always keep a jar in case I need to take it to someone or I need it on hand for someone. So you take a half of a teaspoon, wait two or three minutes, and give them another half teaspoon. Wait two or three minutes, and you can give another half or work up to one teaspoon. By that time, their stomach is feeling much better, they've settled down, and no more vomiting. I have never, ever had uh, sauerkraut fail. Of all the people that has called, how do I stop vomiting? Charcoal isn't working. Uh, Marjorie Turner, some of you know her. She's 80, 89 now, 88, 89. Pardon? I've never tried it, Mike, because of the, the uh... anyway, Marjorie had, has a sister in paradise. She's older. And she went over to get her sister to spend a few days with her. They stopped down at Chico and got a meal. Hold your thoughts. Got a meal, and that night she got sick. She vomited all night. It was food poisoning. The next morning, Marjorie calls as soon as she thought I was up. She says, Linda, I can't stop the vomiting. I says, did you give her charcoal? Yes, it's not working. I says, do you have any sauerkraut? No. So I got in my pantry, took her down some. First dose, that was it. She's a believer of sauerkraut. Now, who had a question over here? Oh. Um, where, what is sauerkraut and where do you get it? Oh, sauerkraut is cabbage. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, fermented ca cabbage. Dwayne's dad, oh, when we was first married in Colorado, he had these 50-gallon uh, drums, wooden drums, and he had it full of cabbage, and you put salt in it. And then you'd go out and eat it, and you rinse it off, rinse some of the salt off. But it's the, um, I can't think of the word I want, but it changes the pH in the stomach, and it stops the vomiting. Very, uh, it's good for the colon and all of that. Okay, uh, we have a live testimony, Hazel, that will tell you, reinforce of what I just said. So Hazel, if you'll come up and, okay, do I, there we go. Okay. Is this on? Oh, yes. All right, well, earlier in the year, my sister Eva uh, was suffering for several weeks with very severe diarrhea and nausea. And she had upped her fiber intake. She was drinking a lot of water, uh, but she was only getting worse. So she tried eating just very, very little amounts of food, you know, as little as she could. 
and continued to drink a lot of water. But she wasn't getting any better, and she was just getting very weak and listless now. Her five foot six frame was down to a hundred pounds. And so, as a last resort, she decided to go to the doctor. The doctor examined her, uh, could find no reason for the nausea or the diarrhea, but she sent her home with four days' worth of antibiotics anyway. And uh, after a couple of days of those, she continued to just get worse. And she just thought she was going to die. Well, at that time, I suggested that she drink some uh, water with charcoal in it. And I brought her a little jar of the powder, and she did. She drank quite a bit of the charcoal in the water. I mean, it was more than a couple of tablespoons. But anyway, immediately the diarrhea began to subside. It was amazing. But she still had the nausea. And later that very afternoon, my sister Judy went over to visit her, and she was in bed, couldn't get up, very weak, just really nauseated. Well, Judy had heard in Linda's class about the sauerkraut juice and the nausea. And she had been vomiting also off and on. So Judy brought her some sauerkraut um, in a jar, and Eva hated sauerkraut juice. She just hated it. But she was at her wit's end over this whole situation, so she took the sauerkraut juice. She did this for the rest of the day and the next day, every time she felt nauseated. And within a couple days, it, the diarrhea, the nausea was totally gone. And um, so we thought, well, two natural remedies and her diarrhea, her nausea was gone, but that wasn't all. Eva recently told me, uh, after her radiation, she had radiation for cancer about a year and a half ago, her urine took on what she called a most obnoxious odor. And she mentioned it to each doctor she went to, but none of them would even address it, much less give her a remedy. After she took the charcoal, that odor went totally away and it has never come back. So needless to say, we three sisters love natural remedies. Thank you, Hazel. I thought of the word I was trying to find. Probiotic. Uh, sauerkraut is a natural probiotic. Okay, in God's creation, God has placed medicinal properties for protection and for healing, to prevent and to restore. An example of that is the life of a tree. Those of you who have studied trees, what is it about a tree that keeps it alive? Sap. And they have xylem cells, phylum cells, carries the sap up and down, stores it in the roots. And this sap is manufactured where? You know where it's manufactured in the tree? Hmm? Where, where is the sap made? Now that's the sales that goes up and down, xylem and phylum. It's in the leaves. Leaves. So if a tree is stripped of all its leaves, it dies unless it has stored some, like the deciduous trees, in the roots, and I'll come back to life in the spring. The sap protects the tree from uh, insect damage and disease. Now, I don't know if you will be able to see this. Usually I have smaller classes. You see what this is? No? I need to get closer? What is it? Years ago, years ago, we have, well, we still do, we have two fir trees. One part at the end of our lawn. Margo knows she sat in the swing. And I told Dwayne, he was a contractor, I said, Dwayne, I need a swing put up between these two trees so in the heat of the day I can go and sit and swing and cool off and all of that. Because it gets kind of hot, even up at Manton in the garden. So he says, I could do that. He could build anything. He could do anything. 
So he built me this swing, and I painted it red. I liked red. Well, this was years ago. We were young, and we did not realize what we were doing to the tree. Dwayne had to drill a hole on each side, you know, on each tree to put the log across to hang the swing. And this is what happened. And you see what happened? This tree was only trying to protect itself from insect damage and disease, and it started flowing much on both, both sides where we had hooked the log into. It was trying to protect itself. This healing salve, or pitch I should call it, is powerful, very powerful. It's one of God's natural remedies to protect the tree. Man has discovered it is also a natural remedy for human beings. What if you had no medical intervention and your child, yourself, friend, neighbor, whatever, was cut very severely? What would you do? I would use cayenne. <laughs> Absolutely. In my container is always cayenne. Cayenne will stop bleeding. But what are you going to do about an open cut? A laceration. Pressure. What well, pressure? Pardon? Yes, but something better than comfrey, because we've used comfrey, is pine pitch. I would never go without my pine pitch. Comes in one ounce, very expensive, $45 for one ounce. It lasts you the rest of your life. And all you do, it, you always clean. I have um, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol. You clean the wound. If you have to stop the bleeding, like he said, use cayenne. That stops the bleeding. Have you ever put cayenne to stop the bleeding? Yes. It's incredible. It works. It works. It stops internal bleeding, too. Um, yeah, I'll tell you the story. Uh, what was her name? It was Tiffany's classmate lives in Idaho. She had a little girl, and she was, they were trying to have another child, and she kept miscarrying, just kept losing her babies. Finally, she got pregnant, and it looks like this one was going to be for sure. It was a beautiful spring day, and her and her husband decided to take a drive up to the mountains. And they were hiking around when all of a sudden she started hemorrhaging, miles from the hospital miles from any help at all. She, they had a cell phone, called his mother, which was a nurse. What do we do? She says, do you have any cayenne with you? She, they said, yes. Start taking cayenne. She took cayenne. Took ty and of course, he rushed her to the hospital. Before he even got to the hospital, the bleeding had stopped. You can stop internal bleeding and external with cayenne. If you have an open sore and you put black pepper on it, what will happen? It will turn all red and infected. Try it. It's not worth it. This is why we are told in the spirit of prophecy we are not to use black pepper. It's an irritant. Internally, we should not be using black pepper, white pepper, no. Cayenne is a different type of family, and it heals. But what you do, so you clean the wound, and then in my stash here, I always have some Q-tips. You dip the Q-tip the in, because this is very sticky, it's pine pitch, and then you put it in the cut. You should always have, and you know what I'm talking about, butterfly band-aids, little butterfly band-aids. You pull the skin together, and you butterfly the band-aid together. The first experience I had was uh, one of our renters. Her name was Kathy. She had a little boy about two years old. His name was Sam, and he's still in the area. He's grown now. She calls me one day, and she says, Sam just fell, and he cut right above his eye really, really bad. And she describes this. I says, Kathy, you need to take him to the emergency immediately. No, we don't have insurance. We're not going to go down there. I says, Kathy, you really need, he know, the way you describe it, he needs to have stitches. She says, nope, I'm going to come up, and you fix him. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I got my pine pitch out. Sam was a very obedient boy. I explained to him what we were doing. Children, you always explain to them. Don't shock them. 
Don't scare them. Explain what you're going to do. We cleaned it. I put the pine pitch in, butterflied it shut, and I said, Sam, you cannot touch it. You cannot get it dirty. For two days, took the Band-Aids off. It was all pink, perfectly clear. I have never seen anything that heals so quickly as pine pitch. Doing a cooking class in Anderson, and my mother was my right arm cook in, in the kitchen, and it was a few minutes before, well, it was about 5.30. Class started at 6, doing the prep work, and she cut her finger with a knife severely between her two fingers, cutting avocados, doing something. And I was working out, setting up the front, and a lady helper came running out. Your mother just really cut her finger bad. And I looked up at the clock, and it was 5.30. I says, quick, take her to Dr. Hinkle, which was just, just a little ways from the church, the Anderson Church. He's now passed away. They called, and he'd already left. I says, okay, let's clean it up, and let's put pine pitch on it. So I had my pine pitch. We cleaned it up. I charcoal in my hand. And I taped these two fingers together to hold it together. And I says, Mother, don't take the bandage off. Don't get it wet. Keep it on there. We kept it on for three days, took it off. It was all healed up, pink, new skin, no scarring. With pine pitch, there's hardly ever, ever a scarring. Sam doesn't have a scar to this day. Does the pine pitch wear off, or do you have to take it off? Oh, you have to use baby oil or some type of oil to get it off. It is sticky. You know how pine pitch is, very sticky. The gentleman that uh, I used to get it from, he's now passed away. I called him. I talked to him several times. I said, we have tried tapping our pine trees up there. When the pitch flows, you can cut into a pine tree, and I mean, it flows. You've had that experience. And it turns as hard as a rock. I says, what do you do? Well, whether it's true or not, this is what he told me. He says, well, we have some very sophisticated, expensive equipment that taps it without letting the air get into it. I do know you don't want to leave the cap off. It will get hard. But one little bottle will do you the rest of your life. Uh, I would not be without charcoal, and I would not be without my pine pitch. There is a cream called PAV. And this is pine pitch with something. Anyway, it's a creamy s substance. This is what we use for, and this isn't an emergency thing, but just to let you know, uh, for people that has fungus. Fungus fingernails, toenails, um, athlete's feet, you know, problems like that. This is what we use, and it's not as sticky. I was asked to speak at a camp meeting uh, in Minnesota. This has been about three or four years ago. And so my last presentation was on natural remedies, and I shared this. The main spiritual speaker was a pastor from, I don't know, down south somewhere. And after the meeting, he came up, he says, I want some of this. So he bought some. And the next morning, the next morning before I gave my presentation again, he said, um, can I share a testimony? So he came up. I said, sure. He says, I didn't tell you why I wanted it. He says, I was over in the Philippines. He travels a lot and does mission work and stuff. He says, I got athlete's feet. F feet? Foot? However you say it. Very, very bad on both feet. So it's plural. <laughs> feet. He said, it is so bad. And I've gone to doctors after doctors everywhere I go. Can you help me? It cracks and it bleeds. And he says, when you said about PAV, he says, I didn't have much faith in it. But he says, I bought some. And he says, I went home that night while he was at the camp. And he said, I applied it. He says, usually of a morning when I wake up and I get out of bed, he says, my feet is so painful. It's bleeding and cracking and white. It's just horrible, he said. One night, Application of this. He says, I could not believe it. It looked almost healed. To this day, this has been, I don't know, four or five years ago, he still gets PAP because he's traveling all over the world just for precaution. He says, I don't want to ever be without my PAV. Healed up beautifully, and now he uses it as a preventative. 
PAV, and I don't know what it stands for. This is, I carry the Super PAV. I want, if I'm going to use natural remedies, I want to be sure that it works. This is 100% pure. pure. There was, oh, no, I can't tell any more testimonies. i got to keep going here. Okay, how would you stop a heart attack? If you were with someone or yourself, no medical intervention, how would you stop a heart attack? Some of you. Cayenne pepper. Again, cayenne pepper. Dr. Craig, some of you might remember, maybe not. Um, he was a, a member here, had a practice in Las Molinas. He's now passed away, graduate of Loma Linda. He believed in this 100%. I have never had the opportunity, and I hope I never do, to use it on a person that's having a heart attack. He swore by it. Dr. Louis believes in it. It will stop. And what you do, if, if you can get some liquid, uh, water, anything, put it underneath their tongue. If not, just stick it under their tongue. Yes, it is hot. It will burn, but it will only burn so hot. They also have a tincture. Yeah, they have a tincture too. And it will open up the blood vessels, let the blood through, and you can stop a heart attack very quickly. But the best thing to do is what Rob will be teaching you next time to prevent having a heart attack, okay? <laughs> the diet, exercise, all of that. Okay. What if you were burned severely, third degree burns, what would you do? Aloe vera. Aloe vera. Now there's a lot of natural remedies for burns, and you all you probably are familiar with that. Honey, Epsom salt. A friend of mine, uh, they lived out at Platina. He had four boys. His wife was canning. The little Joshua came in just as she was pulling out a jar out of the canner. It bursted all over him and he had third degree burns all down. The father immediately put him in the tub with Epsom salt and had no scarring. Left him there a while. I think it was about two days. <laughs> Pardon? He didn't tell me, just dump some in. You know with natural remedies, it's not so precise. Just get plenty. What? Uh, it was cool, but not uncomfortable to the child. When you're dealing with children, don't make things uncomfortable for them. The treatment won't work. When you do a hot foot bath, which I'm sure Denny will be sharing in hydrotherapy, don't make it so hot that they're screaming, you're burning me, mommy. You know, make it comfortable for them. Don't go to extremes. Just do what you can do that, to be as effective as you can. Okay, in case of a burn, this is my aloe vera plant. It is full, full of aloe vera. Aloe vera has the same properties as aspirin in that it stops the pain. I was burnt a few years ago on my chest uh, with scalding water. Dr. Louis looked at it and said it was third degree burns. I was in pain. And I thought, well, I'll get honey. Honey didn't even face it. My aloe vera plant had froze during the winter, so I didn't have one. I hadn't replaced it. Always have an aloe vera plant in your home. And they're really easy to grow. I even put it in your handout, how to grow an aloe vera plant. Most people can't. They overwater it. Just ignore it. Once a, once a month, maybe. It, they like to be ignored, but they will freeze during the winter, at least up at Manton. And so Luella, I called Luella. She said, oh, I'll be right over. So she brought me some aloe vera. And I started rubbing it on my chest. And every few, oh, about every 20, 30 minutes, I would rub it on my chest. Oh, it took that, all that pain away, and it didn't even blister. I don't even have any scars from it. Aloe vera. Now let me show you about aloe vera. How many have, have not worked with aloe vera? Well, then I'll show you. I have a leaf, yeah, that we have used. Aloe vera is number one choice treatment for a canker sore. But you have to realize that a canker sore, everyone has a different pH, and what will work on one may not work on the other. But for me, you can't beat aloe vera. But as you see, if I turned it this way, it would drip. It's full of gel. And so you cut, you cut, and you don't drop it. 
you cut cut the skin off. Yeah, I'll do it here. And you can take a knife. Probably would be better. I have a knife in here. In in, in your kit, you should have a knife. And you can ah, oh, this is really dripping. Then you can cut this gel out. Hold it on a canker sore, usually one or two applications, three at the most, the canker sore is gone. But then you can rub it, because this has thorns on it. So you don't want to rub someplace where you have burned and stick the person. Take the gel out and just rub it. And if you're very careful about taking the skin off and not touching the gel, when you're taking the skin off, it won't be bitter in case you want to use it for, it's very good for uh, indigestion, for irritable bowel syndrome and stuff like that. Okay, so aloe vera, and you've got that print out. So let's go on. Another thing that is very common, you should have a little breadboard, if you can, or a chopping block. Um, where, is, where is it? Oh, here it is. And Rob and Margo could tell this. In the summer, you do a lot of hiking or whatever. It seems like you're more prone to accidents during the summer months. What if you sprained your ankle? How many of you have witnessed or have had a sprained ankle and, and have witnessed the pain that goes with it? A bad sprain is very, very painful. So what you do, you have your little knife in your little bag and a little cutting board, and you slice some onion, or onion, um, lemon. Well, the reason I'm showing this to you, because usually I don't. I should just slice you some lemon and put it on. And one day a person came up to me and says, I, I tried pulling the whole lemon on my ankle. <laughs> They're not getting it. <laughs> so you slice. You slice your, your uh, lemon, and then you pack it around your ankle or wrist, whatever, and then you take your ace bandage and you hold it on. Send them to bed. The next morning, the pain will be gone. You, almost, almost always. If it's really, really bad, you might have to let it dry out a little bit and apply another one. It's not healed, so you have to baby it, be careful with it, like you would a sprained ankle. But the pain that is so killing, it does work. What a testimony. Again, God's miraculous power that is in the things of nature. Now, I wanted to share, I've got 20 minutes. I wanted to share some things that's not an emergency, but that you should have. Now, in your kit, you should have different you know, sizes of Band-Aids that you might use. You don't need a lot of equipment. Just follow the list. Here I have some essential oils. That would be class number 102 instead of 101. Skin cancer is another thing that we have to be aware of. The little common basal cell can skin cancer sarcoma. Um, camphor phenique will take care of that so nicely. So you should have a container of camphor phenique. If you get stung with a, or mosquitoes and stuff, the itching. That will take care of the itching to camphophonique. Who was it? Lori was telling me she raised her kids with camphophonique. But uh, what you have to do is these little skin cancers. And if you're not familiar with, there's different types. Some are deadly. Then you need to figure out what kind you have. But these little common ones. Um, why do you get these? You know the cause? Hmm? Fat. Yeah, fat. It's fat, refined oils in your diet. You remove the oils from your diet, and you stop getting skin cancer. I was up at Fall River Meals when I was doing, helping uh, with the uh, evangelistic series up there. I was doing the health lectures, and a lady came up to me. Oh, her face was 
looked horrible. She had all these where they had taken the skin cancers off, and she says, I get these all the time. She was from the South, heavy pork, raised, you know, a lot of fat. And she says, now my doctor is saying I can't even go out in the sun. She says, I love the out of doors, and here I'm cooped up in the house. What can I do? Quizzed her on her diet, yeah, heavy fat, refined oils, removed that, and then the evangelistic mediums is over, and I thought, I often wondered what happened to her. A few years later, I was at Paradise when they had the camp meetings over there. We were over there one weekend, went into the girls' restroom, the ladies' restroom, and here she stood. Oh, when she saw me, she was so excited. She says, look, Linda, and she showed me her face, beautiful skin. All the scarring, beautiful. She says, I changed my diet. I can be out in the sun now. It's the refined fat. So if you're having problems with these little skin cancers, get rid of the fat in the diet. But camphor phonique, what you do, you have to carry it around with you and keep it moist. Usually less than a week, depending on the person, less than a week, it will be gone. My father had one on his ear, and uh, he showed me about it. You know how they do, they scab up and they come off, and then they scab up again. So I got him some camphophonite, and he probably lived 15 years after that, never had another skin cancer. So, and he was from the South, uh, raised with pork and all of that. Okay, um, oh, I forgot to share with you, uh, an onion is very good, like for a poultice, you slice the onion, oh, I better just show you. I'm going to try to do this quickly. I'm not getting it as thin as I like. In my little medicine kit, my emergency kit, I make, I make bags out of my leftover 100% cotton. So I just sew up the side. And so what you do, you take a pan with some water in it, you put it on the stove and bring it to a boil. Then you take it off the stove, and you put your onion slices in it. You leave it there just a few seconds, 20, no more than 30 seconds. And they'll be hot, so have a dipper. And then you put it in your bag, and I make it so I can fold it over. You put that on your ear or whatever. And it, pardon? Oh, yeah, it does, too. It, it draws. Very good. So another one of God's marvelous things. Uh, what about an individual that's suffering from sinusitis, um, asthma attacks, children? What can you use for that? Uh, first of all, you, if you have the, you don't, during an attack, there's no time to educate the person so that they don't have another attack. And I don't have time to go into that. But Bvax, eucalyptus. There are 700 different varieties of eucalyptus. They all come from uh, Australia. Bvax is the highest in potency. They call it Bvax because it's a Latin word that means tomacious for life. It has saved many, many lives. Now, Luella, some of you know Luella. When she feels like she's getting a sore throat, she'll spray it in her throat. I tried it once. I won't do it again. <laughs> it takes your breath away. This stuff is powerful, but the sore throat was gone. I mean, it is very powerful. For sore, sore, sore uh, arthritis, uh, muscle problems, but mainly, and I'm going to pass it around. Yes, I'm going to pass one on each side, and if you want to smell it, it opens up the sinuses. Very, very good. And if you're suffering with a cold, stuffed up nose, you can spray it on your pillowcase. Just pass that around. You can smell it. And you can breathe all night. It is incredible. This is... You can probably smell it in the room. It's, it is powerful. Yeah, they call it VVAX. And it's tenacious for life. It's a, a Latin word that means tenacious for life. <clears throat> okay. Uh, another thing that you will see more and more of, because the styles are changing, 
and that is UTIs and bladder infections, especially among the women. Why is that, do you suppose? Especially in the winter months, you'll see this. Not enough drinking of water. Now, what's the main reason? They don't keep their extremities warm. I first noticed this when I was working for Dr. Hulse up in Oregon. And all of a sudden, we had all these ladies and women coming with UTIs. I says, Virgil, how come? He says, because the styles of dresses have gotten short. Remember those years? Wore short dresses. I did too. I didn't know that it, any better that I was really harming uh, the circulation of my body. And they would, the, the congestion in the bladder area, and they would come down with that. What would you do if you came down with a bladder infection and you had no medical intervention? What would you use? Yeah, we've heard of cranberry, cranberry juice. juice, but what if you didn't have cranberry juice or any of these? Drink more water, yeah. Hot foot bath, get the congestion out of the area. Always a foot bath, get, get it out. But number one choice treatment is peach leaf tea. This should always be in your pantry. Peach leaf tea. This is from our orchard from last year. I've got to pick some fresh. I keep this on hand just for when people calls me. What peach leaf does, and it does have a disadvantage, is that it stops the pain almost immediately. So people think they're well. So they quit drinking it. You can't do that. You have to treat it like you would an antibiotic. So you keep drinking it for about a week, three, three or four cups uh, throughout the day. Be sure that you do not get peach leaves from trees that have been sprayed. You're just asking for more problems. Use organics. No, if you don't have peach leaves yourself, find someone that has peach leaves that they have not sprayed. And then you dry them. The easiest, oh, I was going to bring my sack. The easiest way to dry your herbs, when you learn all of them, and that's another class, is cut them, put them in a brown paper sack, you know, like you get at Rayleigh's, roll the top over and hang it on your clothesline. Don't let it get wet if it's going to rain. You, I had to put mine in the greenhouse the other day because I had just harvested my orange peppermint. And it will dry, and then you just crumble it up in the sack, and then you date it and tell what it is, and you put it in your pantry. Everyone should have a supply of certain herbs that is very beneficial. What's the best time to take the leaves off of the tree? Oh, any time. Now. In its prime. I should be doing that. Well, there's many, many other things that I could tell you. But I think I will tell you the most, the most, God has sent, Dwayne and I, many, many experiences to strengthen our faith. When you work with natural remedies and you see God's healing power work through uh, natural means, you see the power of God and it develops faith. So I'm going to tell you a story, one of the most severe case we, cases we ever took care of. His name was Milton Hamilton. He was from Oregon. I did not know him. I had heard about him. My dad knew him. He called me one evening, and he tells me his story. He was a big man, six foot six, slightly overweight, high blood pressure, and he was a diabetic, taking all the insulin that he, the doctor would allow him to take. Uh, about three years prior to that time, he had developed a diabetic ulcer on the ball of his foot. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. But he had just come home from the doctor, and the doctor said, gangrene had set in. He says, we have to amputate your leg immediately. That's when he calls me. He says, I hear you know something about health. Can you help me? I have a friend that will bring me down. So his friend brought him down, and his, let's see, his left leg was all purple, deep purple. His right leg, which had a ball, now this was taken 10 days into the program. We didn't think about taking a picture at first. It was with a polar, Polaroid, so it's not very good clear. It was the size of a grapefruit, right below his toes. His legs were swelled, or his foot and leg was swelled so much, it did not look like a foot. It looked like elephantitis. And his whole leg 
was black. Now, I mean black. You can see here, but this was 10 days into the program. So uh, Dwayne, being skilled in hydrotherapy uh, from attending Madison College, that was our first concern was to save his leg. What would you do? He was necrotic. Oh, yes. Hmm? Cayenne. <laughs> no, we didn't want to add more pain. <laughs> Okay, hydrotherapy, hydrotherapy, oh, hydrotherapy. You, hydrotherapy can do what medical science cannot do. We have witnessed this over and over again. We had two buckets, about this tall, so we did hot and cold. Now, with the diabetic, you have to be careful that you don't burn them. They have no circulation, no feeling much. Hot and cold. We also did hot and cold showers. Now, I don't know about you folks down here, but in Manton, our water is cold. And we, we have a large house. Downstairs was where Dwayne gave his treatments. Bigger shower, larger shower. And we could always hear, no matter where you were in the house, when that cold water, when Dwayne turned the cold water on. <laughs> he was a very quiet man. He never hardly said anything. The other thing we did was put him on regularity. This is so important. If you're trying to heal something, you have to be regular. Your body will respond to regularity. And what I mean is you get up at a certain time. You drink your lemon water at a certain time. Do your internal cleanse. You eat breakfast at a certain time. You have your treatments, the, the, the hot and cold treatments. All that we did was timed perfectly and no suppers. Your body will heal so much faster if you leave off the evening meal if you're trying to heal something. This is what I was taught. And it works. So we did this. Now, he, when he arrived, he, on his dresser, he had all these little bottles. What do you think they were? Prescription drugs that he was taking. You know, high blood pressure, and then he had to take one to counteract that, and his insulin, and all, all the list went on. Charlotte Holmes, Dr. Holmes, that was my main mentor, was there when he arrived. I called her. I says, this is beyond me. So she examined him. She says, without doing a biopsy, this all looked like hamburger, raw red hamburger. She took me in the other room. She says, don't be surprised if you lose this one. I says, I had such strong faith in I says, no. I says, God will work through the natural remedies. He will save Melton Slade. She tried to encourage me, but anyway, she wrote out the program. At 10 o'clock, he was to have his green drink. At 10 o'clock, we went out and picked green beans well, before 10 o'clock. Then I'd come in and juice it, and that was his nat natural insulin that we started giving him, the chlorophyll. Um, what else did we do? Sunlight therapy. So healing. Several times a day, we would put him outside on the lounge, expose his legs to sunlight therapy, only for a few minutes, two minutes at the most, and then gradually worked up. At night, when he went to bed, oh, that was the good time. I had a, a stainless steel bowl, it was, still have it, in fact, about that big. Red potato, I'd grate red potato. Charcoal, myrrh, you know, in Bible times, myrrh was value more than gold, very healing for myrrh, and comfrey. Where's, who was saying comfrey? Comfrey is a fantastic killer, a he healer. I'd mix this mixture up, and then Duane would put it on a, a, for a poultice, and we would wrap his leg, and then we'd have prayer, put him to bed, and the next morning, every, we'd do this every night, the next morning, when Duane would unwrap it, you can only imagine the smell. It was horrible. Clean it off, start our routine for the whole day. This is 10 days into the program. Uh, those of you who want to see, I had some little pictures I have taken, but you can see the healing that started to take place. He was with us three weeks. My grandfather was waiting for us to come down and help him with his issue, so... In three weeks, his leg, I don't know if you can see, 
was like this, just a little purple in the bottom, the bottom part. Part what? What is she saying? Oh, the poultice. Okay, charcoal, red potato, grated, myrrh, and comfrey. And I mean, we had a big bowl. We had our, we call him our foster boy. It was a boy that we took in that didn't have a father and his mother didn't want, want him around anymore. He was a student here years ago. So we took him. Hold your thought, Denny. And he was, he helped me. It was a lot of work to do milk. We all worked at it. At 10 o'clock one day, I went out. It was in the fall of the year. I picked the very last green bean. Now, those of you who know, I know my garden. Inside and out, I know where the weeds are. I know where everything is. I picked the last green bean. Dr. Holmes was not around. I made the last green drink, green drink for him. Before this happened, on the 10th day, I should back up, on the 10th day, we had a recliner in our den, and we designated that for him, so he'd keep his leg up, elevated. During worship that morning, now, like I said, Milton was very quiet. He all of a sudden bursts out laughing, just like a little kid. And I turn, I says, Milton, what's the matter? He says, look, I can move my foot. Now, when he came, it was so swell, it didn't even look like a foot. He says, I've got feeling in it. I can move it. That was... Uh, right before 10 days. So then the 10 days came, and I picked the last green bean. I thought, man, what am I going to do? Because four days into the program, he comes to me in the kitchen, and he says, Linda, I'm off all medication. We don't take people off medication. Mm -hmm. And I about panicked. I says, no. He says, no, no, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm testing my blood. I'm doing all this. Everything's okay. I says, I don't advise this. He says, no, it's, it's okay. That was four days into the program off all his little jars. Ten days, no more green drink. And I prayed. I said, Lord, what am I going to do for tomorrow? I have no more green beans. And that's green bean juice is your natural insulin. So uh, the next morning came. I was telling, our, I'll call him David. It's not his real name, but he does live local here, so I'll change his name. I said, I don't have any more green beans. What am I going to do? He says, Linda, where is your faith? And I says, look, I picked the last one yesterday. I know there's no more green beans out there. He said, give me the little, I have a stainless steel bowl. I still have it at home. I should have brought it, showed it to you. He says, let me go pick them. Mm. So he took the bowl and went out. And I can still remember standing at the kitchen sink. Our garden is uh, facing, the, our kitchen sink is facing the garden. And I was praying. I says, Lord, how do you tell a young man the difference between presumption and faith. How am I? He had such faith. At night, he would stay up late by the fireplace studying. When we'd all go to bed, he'd be studying his Bible. Had such faith. And I was really concerned. What am I going to tell him when he comes back with an empty container? Well, he didn't come back to the back door. He came to the kitchen window where I was standing, and he held up the most beautiful green beans I had ever seen. Praise God is right because God placed those green beans there for a lesson for me. My faith, I didn't have. He did. That afternoon, who do you suppose called? She, Dr. Holmes did tours. She went all over the place. And I never could get a hold of her when she was on these routes. We didn't have cell phones back then. She calls. She says, well, how's things are going? I says, I don't have any more green beans. And I told her what had happened. She says, Linda, don't you have Swiss chard? I says, oh, yeah, I've got plenty of that. She says, well, it's chlorophyll that you want. He won't like it as well, but give him Swiss chard juice. So I did, and it worked just fine. After three weeks, he went home. We had ordered him a gallon. Do you remember watchers? It was chlorophyll watchers. It was a health thing, liquid. It was liquid chlorophyll, a gallon for him to take home to finish healing it up. It had it closed up so beautifully, but it wasn't completely closed. And so we sent that home with him. As soon as he arrived, he couldn't wait to tell his wife. His wife just panicked and made an appointment with the doctor the next morning. He went to the doctor who had been treated him for several years, 
And he could not believe it. He says, what have you been doing? He says, whatever you're doing, keep it up. So he finished up with chlorophyll. It healed up, and he lived many, many years after that and died of old age. This is why I believe in natural remedies. We have only touched the surface, and I've gone three minutes afterwards. Forgive me, Pastor. <laughs> so uh, what, what more can I say? It's a study that we have done, uh, especially I have done for 37 years, and you cannot exhaust it. Okay, Denny. Yes, there's a gentleman down in Southern California in L.A., very, very rich. Has saved, he saved his life because someone showed him, told him how to do hot and cold hydrotherapy, that he would never walk again. Uh, you mentioned a word, dime. Be sure you have a copper dime in your kit. Silver. Copper, uh, 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 copper penny, excuse me, too late. Copper penny. When you are maybe in town or something quick and you don't have, say, you don't want to do charcoal and a little girl is screaming like everything that's happened to me back in Minnesota in a health food store, all of a sudden her daughter comes running in, screaming, bloody murder. And we said, what's the matter? Bet, 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 you know, and here a hornet had bit her. There was a hole, uh, well, they're in the ground, aren't they? And she had walked in its hive or whatever you call those things. Yeah, nest, and got stung. And she was just dancing up and down. She was probably about three, three, four years old. And I quickly dug in my purse, and I got a copper penny. The new ones won't work. They're not copper. So save your old copper penny. Put it right on where the bite was, and pretty soon she was going, <gasps> and she'd quit her screaming, you know. It, it neutralizes it. It pulls it out. Uh, pennies aren't something that God has created, but anyway, it does work. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we need to have closing prayer. I will say, I will say this. Those of you, I have finally completed my book about a year ago of the natural remedies that I was taught, the experiences that God has given to us. You don't need to look on your back page now, but maybe after sundown, if you want any of these things that you do not have, I do have them available, and you can call me and order them. I do not sell things on Sabbath. Anybody that didn't fill out one of these because we had ran, ran out, um, I need you to fill one out, please. Uh, one for family will probably do now because we're running low on sheets. Also, somebody lost a K-Y-O-C-E-R-A cell phone. Oh, dear. Is that yours? Oh, it's over here. Okay. Oh, do you have a question? Have or, okay. Can you, do <laughs> you, you talk to our pastor. Um, I'll need these back, please. So fill them out as quickly as you can. Uh, you know, I do the medical missionary class where 20 minutes is spent on a natural remedy. 20 minutes, our first part is devotion, power of prayer. You have to, you have to develop a prayer life, and then we're going through ministry of healing. It's all yours. I'm done. Have yes, please. You want me too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have prayer. I've talked enough. How many of you enjoyed the scent of this bee vax? Did it clean out your sinuses? Sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Yeah, be sure everyone has one because this is our record whether you've